Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. We are uh, here today to announce that uh, the Office of the Prosecuting Attorney has charged three individuals with uh, a number of different charges, including uh, trafficking, uh, contributing to human trafficking by a misuse of documentation, an accessory to domestic assault in the first degree, armed criminal action, kidnapping, and abuse through forced labor. So these charges arose out of an incident where the police were called to check on the uh, welfare of an individual that was seen out and looked like he needed some help. So the police responded to that location. First, they refused uh, were refused admittance into the home, uh, but as they were standing there um, deciding uh, what plan of action that they were going to do, uh, our victim ran out of the house uh, yelling, screaming for help. Uh, so they were able to uh, assist him in his help and learn from him that he had been came to this country about a year ago with the uh, intent on a student visa with the intent to go to school at Missouri S&T uh, and the family uh, was supposed to help sponsor him. Instead, after a few months, their, their uh, relationship went south and he was held captive in a couple of different homes in St. Charles County in uh, Darden Prairie and in Defiance. Uh, and during that, he was forced into uh, working at one of the defendant's computer information uh, company and also was assigned to do medial tasks around the house and stuff like that. And when he didn't do them properly, um, they beat him. Uh, they beat him with their fist. They stomped on him. They kicked him. They beat him with a uh, electrical wiring uh, that they had put together in order to, to beat him. They beat him with PVC pipes. Um, they forced him to sleep in the basement of unfinished basement. Uh, they starved him, um, limited his food intake, and uh, limited his access to the public and to the restrooms and stuff like that. So, uh, this incident occurred uh, when he uh, was uh, found. We uh, took him to the hospital uh, where he is uh, confined as we speak now. He's still hospitalized from his injuries. He has numerous broken bones in his hands, in his fingers, uh, in his toes, broken ribs, a uh, broken nose, and those are in various stages of, uh, of, of healing. He's also got uh, uh, scarring from his top of his head, literally to the bottom of his feet, where he's been beaten with this wire um, thing. He has scarring, he has open wounds, and the scarring is again in various stages of, of being um, of healing. So he's going to be in a hospital for a few days. They're checking to see whether he needs any surgery or anything like that. So we have charged these individuals because of their uh, connection with India. Uh, and it's our understanding that they have, uh, they're very influential there in the political world and they're uh, very influential with regards to having money. Uh, we asked the court to set uh, no bond in this matter and the uh, court agreed to do that, so they're being held with no bond as we speak. Any questions? Are there other victims or suspects to be released? We don't know that at this time. We suspect that there may be somebody out there, and we're certainly interested in the press getting the word out there. Um, you know, there's organizations and, and there's a police you know, presence. Uh, this came to our attention because of a concerned citizen. So once again, we'll go back to the saying that if you see something, say something. We'd much rather check it out and find nothing uh, than have an incident like this that has been going on for nearly a year before a concerned citizen uh, saw something that looked suspicious and notified us to follow up with an investigation. Can you give us the name of the people who have been charged, what they've been charged with, and then the age possibly of the victim? Well, we'll hand out some, um, some paperwork here I could Try to pronounce the names, okay? Uh, but we have uh, some paperwork that we're going to hand out here, and, and that'll have the names and the ages of the individuals, and they're all charged with the same thing. It's a sad uh, story here. Uh, just talk about the hard work of our police officers uh, to be able to come. To well, the officers did a great job. They, they, they Once they got uh, information to check on the welfare of the individual, they went to that location. Uh, even though they were denied admittance or anything like that, they didn't just turn around and leave, they stayed there to, to determine another plan of action. Uh, and by them staying there, the individual was able to make his way out of the house to them. And then they were able to conduct an investigation. 
they did the proper things with regards to securing search warrants and securing the individuals and, and getting the, the treatment that, that he needed uh, from the hospital and also for securing these individuals. Um, incriminating statements from the defendants has been made and uh, that strictly goes to the work of the police officers being able to interview them um, at the time of, the, of their arrest. The armed criminal action charge, is there a firearm in the house or any kind of weapon? That just comes from the weapons that they use. The, 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 wire, is, the wire was the kind of wire that you uh, run for electricity in your house. It's, I think it's called 12-2 and it had been a length such that you could fold it in half and twisted it together to make a, a, a very uh, serious injuries to him with, by using this. Are these suspects related in any way? Uh, they are related, Captain. Your cousin is one suspect. He's a brother-in-law of another suspect, and your victim is a cousin to the suspect, the main suspect. We know the victim is hospitalized. What services or what's available to him when he's released? Because we know he's living there, so kind of what is provided now for this victim moving forward? I'm going to turn it over to them because I know the detective had that information. Yes. So do you? We'll, we'll be limited what we can tell you. Um, but we do, in fact, have, have resources in place to where he will be kept in a safe place, and, and he is well aware of that, uh, so he's still cooperating with the investigation based on those circumstances. He is fearful of his life. Can you talk it's about my that? understanding, sorry, it's my understanding uh, that he has not been able to really accurately communicate with his family in India. Has he been able since these incidents have come to light, been able to communicate with his mother, for example? As of this morning, we have got him in touch with his family members, and they're aware of what's going on, and uh, they're aware that, that he's in a safe place now, and he's seeking medical treatment. And with regards to his concerns about the safety of his family in India, uh, can you speak as to what's going on over there to protect his family from any sort of repercussions that he may fear? We're, we're aware of that possibility, and we're still looking into that. Um, it's in early stages of this investigation. Uh, so we're, we don't have resources over in India right now, but uh, we are looking into those, those aspects. As detectives, can you talk in terms, I know you went over the, the details, but it's just heart-wrenching to hear some of these specific uh, details here. Can you just talk about that, to hear that this really happened? Well, it, it's, it's absolutely inhumane and uncomfortable that, that, that you could treat one human being could treat another human being like this. But when you add to that the fact that these individuals were related, uh, our victim in this case is the cousin of the, uh, the main target of this investigation. And to, to be at the hands of that where he not only, not only was he beat for not completing the menial task or whatever the case may be, but sometimes, um, is it Sadaru? Is he the, yes. that would watch? So Sadaru would uh, actually sometimes call the other two defendants in this case and have him beat him over a light, feed him so that he could uh, watch it. And if he didn't hear the guy, our victim, in screaming in enough pain, he would have him beat him harder. So I mean, I, I don't know how much more you can, animalistic type of behavior you can get than that. We expect the FBI or federal charges in any case to be involved. I don't know at this point. And these are just out of curiosity. It's obviously sick. Is the, the culture? I'm just. You said they're related. Is there? We talk about like caste systems and in, in Indian culture. Have you dove into that at all? As to did this victim try to get help? Was he? Had he resigned himself to being in this situation because of the family influence? I'm just trying to figure out from their perspective. Well, he, he was never left alone. He was always in the presence of somebody, uh, one of the three defendants here. So while he was allowed to call his mother back home, he was only allowed to call her in their presence and it was only allowed to be a, uh, a phone call. There was never any video calls, never any FaceTime uh, that was not allowed. You said he came to this country with the intention of studying at Missouri s and um, Did he actually enroll at the college and did, at any point was he there on campus to take classes or was he doing online classes? He never went to S&T, is my understanding. I, I, I believe he was enrolled in some online classes at the community college here in St. Charles, but he never did attend S&T. And how old is the victim? 20. 20-year-old 20 male. Any other questions? Okay.
Thank you all very much.